Well, first of all, I'm, I'm glad to be here, and um, I want to first right off the bat say I'm, I'm, I'm excited and uh, appreciate Ch Coach Charlie Strong for giving the confidence to me to, to come here and, and lead the um, USF Bulls uh, on offense and um, try to put together a great offensive unit. And um, we're going to do our best to be exciting and to, um, to use, utilize our players to the best of their abilities and try to find the athlete, athletes that can fit our system and, um, and try to sort of use the positives that they bring to the table and um, put them within our system and make sure that we um, utilize those, those strengths and um, for us to be a, a very successful group on our side of the ball. But uh, again, for my family um, who's back in Valdosta still, um, we appreciate the opportunity to come here and be a bull and um, it's going to be a great, great um, season ahead. And we're looking forward to get started here in the spring and um, introduce our offense to our players, get them up to speed, and um, see where we can go from there. Kerwin, without giving away your game plan, obviously, what would you say are one or two really distinguishing characteristics of your offense? Well, the concept of our system, we've, we've ran the system for 18 years now. And um, what I did, I was under 11 different offense coordinators in my 13-year professional career. So what I did as I, I, I decided to get into coaching, I sort of took a little bit from a lot of people. But two of the main people uh, that I've sort of depended on and sort of used in, my, in, in the way I built my system was Lindy Infante when I was with the Indianapolis Colts, one of the smartest guys I've ever been around in the profession. And then also Steve Spurrier, um, and I was a GA under him in 1990, his first year at the University of Florida. And from that point on, I, I, that's when I really re decided I wanted to be a coach, was that season. And um, so we usually utilize a lot of their concepts, a lot of with some other people. But it's a pro-style passing game that utilizes a professional passing game with a lot of the spread concepts. So we think we've got the best of both worlds. We can. Um, we can get the ball in the hands of our best players um, when we need to and when we want to um, and try to utilize our strengths in open field situations, which is what the spread is really about. And also then utilize the run game in the spread with our quarterbacks um, and the ability to sort of keep the numbers in our favor in the run game. But then when we want to drop back and, and throw the football, we do it on a professional level. And I think. I've always said that to me, that's where we separate ourselves from everybody else is that a lot of spread teams I don't think can professionally drop back and throw the football on an NFL professional top level. And um, that's what we will bring, bring to the table. Well, it's, you know, you watch it on film and um, it's, there's, some, there's some talent here. There's some uh, definitely talent. What you really like is the, the, the guys up front because listen, we can draw up all the play, uh, ball plays we want to. We can, we can do all these exciting things, but we got to win the line of scrimmage. That's one thing that we're big on is be physical up front. We got to be the most physical football team um, on every Saturday we line up if we want to be if we want to be good and um, consistent on the offensive side of the ball. So I like that group that's coming back. You know, I think all of them are coming back that, that sort of finished the year. Um, they've added a couple guys for some depth and and some. I think there'll still be some positions that are up for grabs. Even though there's five coming back, I think it'll still be a highly competitive situation up there, which is always good. And then, you know, you got the two running backs, you got a veteran quarterback, and you got some receivers that can run and go get the football. So uh, I think there's, some, there's definitely some parts there we can work with. Like I said in my open statement, I think the big thing is, is what I try to do, people said, do you run, play two tight ends? Do you play one tight end? Do you go with three or four receivers? We try to put the most explosive players on the field. So we're going to go through spring and we're going to find out who those explosive players are. And then our personnel groups will depend on that as we go through the season because you always want to get your best guys on the field. And this system, is uh, we can adapt to any situation we, we need to to make sure we get our best players on the field. And I think with the group that we have, you know, we'll know more when we get them on the grass out there in spring. But I think we've got a chance to have some, some explosive players that can, can really um, – help us score a lot of points. Like to go back to be, be back in Florida where you coached and played for so long. Can you talk a little bit about your, uh, your relationship with Charlie? 
Well, it's, it's great to be back in Florida. You know, I've, I've been here most of my career, um, other than when I was around playing the game and going all over the country and into Canada and, and all over. Um, I always came back here, and, and um, this is sort of my home, this is the state of Florida. But, and then with Coach Strong, you know, it's funny, we, we've known each other for over 30 years. Um, I remember when I was a player, I was introduced to him. He was a young GA at that time, and I was a, a college football player. And um, so we've known each other then across paths many times when he was a, was a coach there at the University of Florida and I'd come back and, and visit with those guys and it was always a, a good relationship. Never, never like serious, you know, close relationship, but it was uh, something that we always respected each other and we always thought a lot of each other and I've always respected the heck out of him as a, as a defense coordinator when he first came up and then, you know, going to Louisville and doing the things he did. Um, He's always had my respect as a coach, and I just thank, thankful, like I said earlier, that, to, that he gave me a chance to come coach with him. I think it's a good, it's going to be a good pairing, you know, him on defense and, and doing the things that he can do and as a head coach, and then offensively us trying to score a bunch of points. Well, I'm going to have to tell you that after I get through. I've, I've always been a head coach uh, when I got into the profession on a full-time basis. I was a player coach in, up in Canada. Uh, I was still playing the game and, and was the office coordinator there in Toronto my last couple of years. Um, but then from that point on, I've been a head coach. And so, um, but I really am looking forward to it. You know, and I always said if it was a situation for me, this would be the perfect situation. Whereas the head coach is a guy who I really admire and I trust and I believe in. Uh, but he's a defensive guy who that's his side of the ball that he really believes in and that's what he wants to focus on. And he's, you know, Coach Strong's given me total, total um, control to go in and run my own system. It's not an offensive guy that's sort of looking over your shoulder. It's a guy who, you know, who believes in what we're doing and he's going to let me take sort of total control on that side of the ball, put in our system and run it. And, um, so I think it's going to be a great situation. Head coach is a, a lot of different things that you've got to deal with. And um, it took away a little bit for me um, as the offense coordinator. I'd stay up. Sometimes I'd stay in my office and spend the night because that was the quiet time I had to really concentrate on putting in the game plans and things like that because during the day, all the head coaching duties were so, you were so involved. Um, this is going to be an opportunity to really focus on that. Um, my son Cade Bell, who's coming on as quality control also, he really took a lot off that my plate this past year with him growing up and, and being a GA for me and being a player for me. He knows my system as good as anybody, probably better than anybody other than myself. And he took a lot off my plate this year, and I thought that really helped us at Valdosta State, the way we were able to play on the offensive side of the ball. But now I get to go back and really focus on that, and I think it's going to really help me to, to really um, do the things I want to do offensively just being the office coordinator. What excites you most about being here at USF and specifically with the personnel that you're going to have this fall? Well, I think we've got a lot of speed. You know, this offense is predicated about speed. You know, I think you see a lot of guys that, that play with a lot of big receivers and, and um, you know, they, they, they throw a lot of jump balls, 50-50 balls. That's not who we are. We're, we're going to go fast um, and we're going to try to get matchups, but we're a system. Uh, driven um, deal in that we're going to try to get people open and we're going to go fast enough to try to keep the defense as simple as we can so they don't have time to really give us all these exotic looks so you want to go fast enough to do that but you don't want to go so fast that you're getting outnumbered in the run game or your protections aren't holding up um, you want to make sure that you're in control on your side to the point where you can get the matchups and you can get the guys open in space for them to guys to be able to utilize their speed. So I'm all about speed, explosive players, because we feel like if we do that, we can find ways to get them in their positive positions on the field so they can utilize that speed. And so that's what we'll try to do is, is um, not just go fast, not just call a bunch of plays. We're going to go fast enough, but we're going to also make sure we get ourselves in the right position to give those, chance to get those, those guys a chance to, to make explosive plays.
Well, you know, it's, it's funny. People say, I've, I've played at the highest level. I know what great football looks like. I, I know, and at Division II, we played great football. We executed at a high level. And it don't matter if it's against Division II, Division Three, or whatever I was at, 1AA at Jacksonville. Because I've never, I've just not been, you know, sometimes you can look at that and say it may be a big, big shock for you to come to this level. A guy who's been in D2 his whole life, maybe, that guy. But that's not who I am now. I've been in NFL. I've coached at the highest level. And I know what it takes to play and what kind of execution you got to have to be at the highest level. And so I know what we're going to have to do to, to get ourselves ready. And um, I understand that. I understand speed. I remember being on the NFL teams and seeing the kind of speed that I thought SEC only had. And I got to the NFL. I said, that's nothing. SEC is nothing compared to NFL. So I know what, what we're going against in, in this level, and um, we're going we're gonna to execute. I think that's the one thing about our system is that a lot of people just try to play so fast nowadays, and they try to just run so many plays. And if you look at us, I think the one thing you're going to see is we're going to go fast, but we're also going to try to execute at a very, very high level. And, um, and with our spacing, with our timing, with our rhythm of our system, I think you will see, and what I try to do is obtain perfection on the field. That's what got me interested in coaching was when I was in 1990, I never thought I'd coach. I blew out my knee, had ACL reconstruction. I missed a year of football, the Buccaneers released me. And uh, Steve Spurry hired me as a graduate assistant. When I went there, I seen almost perfection on the field, his first year at University of Florida. The spacing and just the well concepts, the concepts of the routes and the rhythm of the, the system. Um, that's almost perfection, and that's what I try to obtain every day at practice. And we'll, I think we'll show that in the game, is how well we execute and the precision that we do it. And I think that will, that will go to any level and be successful. Coach, I read in an article that uh, one of the reasons you left the University of Jacksonville was due to philosophical differences. What are some of the philosophical similarities between you and this university that would cause you to leave a head coaching role, a successful one? Well, I think what sold me was, first of all, Charlie Strong. Um, and I know Charlie, like I said, for 30 years, and I've respected the heck out of him as a head coach and as a defense coordinator, just as a football coach. And, and not only as a coach, but as a person. I've known him, I've known his family. And um, he's a guy that I respect a heck of a lot as a, as a coach and as a person. And I think you've got to surround yourself around good people. Um, just a little chance I've had to, uh, with Michael Kelly, the, the AD here, he also I've known from, uh, well, uh, Alan Verlander and him have known each other. Um, and Alan hired me at Jacksonville University as a, a great friend of mine and a guy who, who got me into profession really on the college level and um, was a great AD for me at Jacksonville University before he left me there at the end. Um, but Alan has known Michael and, and, and to hear him talk about him, I just think you got to have somebody above us that, that is willing to take us to the next level. And, and um, I'm excited about him as the AD. I think that's going to put us in a position to, to do great things here. And so with those two in place above us, above me as the OC, um, I'm excited about the opportunity to take USF to a different level. Yeah, you know, I, I, just to be honest, I have not. I've seen a little bit of film. I watched um, the Georgia Tech game yesterday when I got here in the office. Um, you know, he's a special player, though, just watching him run routes, his size and ability to get open and separate from defenders. Um, you can tell he's a very special, talented kid. And so, um, man, anytime you can keep guys like that here um, is really, really good. And so we're going to utilize him. Again, when we go through spring ball, I've played with a lot of I've gone into a season where we played a lot of 12 personnel, which is two tight ends, uh, because we had two great ones. Let's utilize their abilities. There will be years where we only play with, we'll play with four receivers a lot because we've got four great ones and maybe we don't have a, that special tight end. So we're going to utilize our, our guys on this roster and try to put them in positions to be great football players, and he'll definitely be one that, that we'll, we'll try to get in position to make plays for us.
It's funny, right when I got here yesterday in the parking lot, it's the first guy I met. He was walking out and I was walking in. Uh, I said, this is a good omen you know, to meet the, the guy who I think can, can, can lead this offense this year. He's got everything you want physically. Uh, I don't know much about him, his makeup mentally and, and the way he approaches the game and, and um, you know, how well he's going to catch on to this system. But uh, I know he's played, you know, he's been around some good football in his career. And um, last year he got a chance to really get in and, and be the guy. Um, but he's got everything you're looking for. He's a, a sharp kid. He's got all the physical attributes you're looking for in a quarterback. Um, I think he moves. People don't give him enough credit for that. Just watching him on film, I think he can do some things to help you maybe in the run game to keep the, the defense honest um, that we're always looking for to make sure we don't get outnumbered in the run game. I think he can give us some stuff there. But I think it, this is going to really help him in his career to be in a professional offense as far as throwing the football. Which is going to be a five, five progression read, full field reads. Now after the first step, he may get to, he may cancel two right off the bat. So he may, you know, it's, again, it's a rhythm. When he has back step, he's already should cancel two and he's already one, two, three. He should have his reads as soon as he hits his back foot. And if it's not there, we expect him to hit this check down or, or run with the football. Let's keep positive plays. I always tell our quarterbacks, one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play, who I don't know if he was the most gifted probably physically, but it's Peyton Manning. But he probably threw more check downs um, in the history of the NFL than any other quarterback because he was willing to take what the defense gave him on every play. Um, and so we want to just take what the defense gives us, keep us in great down and distance situations. If we do that as an offense, if you ask probably what was so great about us about us a state this year, we had very seldom had a negative play. Only 19 sacks. Our running backs very seldom lost yards. So if you're at if you're a really good dynamic offense and then you keep yourself in great down and distance situations, um, you're going to score a bunch of points. Like I tell the quarterbacks all the time, hey, if it's not there, you either get run and get me two yards or throw it out of bounds. Keep us in good down and distance situations because we're going to be explosive. The next play may be a touchdown if you'll keep us in good down and distance situations. And I think Blake can bring that to the table. I think his leadership, I think the, the, the experience that he's had so far as a quarterback, um, and then all the intangibles that he brings, I think so will really help this offense get off the ground here in the first year.